the way to identify you know if you want to see last one year last two year last three year uh, the way to identify is that definitely don't invest with the guy who's best in last one year hello ashish uh, firstly thank you so much for accepting our request and taking the time out from your busy schedule and agreed to speak to our investors thank you thank you nice to see you vikas i'm used to giving you a hug so holding hands is a bit different thank you <laughs> right thank you so uh, what we going to do is uh, so bashi there are uh, now 7655 uh, investors who are live uh, you know in fact there was a request before you that they wanted uh, this conversation to be in hindi but this going to be in english okay. yeah this going to be in english uh, so what i'll do is i'll take a minute to introduce you and then you may you, share you want me to do the session in english or hindi english 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 okay theek yeah. hai english okay and uh, yeah once you share the screen once your presentation is over uh, then i'll be asking you one or two questions if time permits okay sure. so uh, hello everyone uh, some of you have uh, joined us here uh, so my name is uh, vikas agrawal Uh, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of AIF and PMS Experts India. Uh, it's a platform for investing in alternate investments and portfolio management services. We are glad to share that we are emerging as one of the largest platform for investing in AIF and PMSs. Uh, so you know, at AIF and PMS Experts India, we keep organizing these knowledge-based sessions, and the whole idea is to educate and empower the investor community as a whole. and uh, uh, and therefore we have organized this uh, et conclave uh, and like to take this opportunity to thank white oak capital for supporting us uh, as a platinum partner and without their support we would have not been able to reach out to investor like you and uh, and get this session going uh, so with me i have uh, uh, ceo of uh, white capital mr ashish somaya uh, ashish uh, uh, has heads both the verticals in fact one the, the side is mutual fund Uh, and then AI and PMS is at White Oak. He brings about uh, almost two decades of rich experience when it comes to investing in equity markets. Before taking over White Oak Capital, uh, he was uh, working with uh, Motila Loswal. He was uh, working as managing director and uh, CEO, and under his able leadership, Motila was awarded as the best brand of the year by CNBC. And the AMC grown from thousand uh, crores to forty thousand crores of asset under management. The same thing is now reflecting in the. in white oak as well where the asset under management is uh, growing the mutual fund aum has reached to more than 10000 crores and and the aif and pms is also shaping up big time they also have couple of global mandates which is run by mr prashant kemta and team so today we want to uh, uh, read ashish's mind and understand what's happening uh, uh, in the economy and before that uh, uh, you know the topic of the day is uh, uh, what ashish decided to speak about is why winner rotates uh, and we have we have witnessing that winner always keep rotating you know there was a time when quality stocks were doing well there time when value stock does well there are times when contrarian view comes up across the markets and you know starts doing well so we want to understand and read ashish's mind today is that what is their approach towards the whole thing when things keeps changing even the top fortune 500 companies don't stay at the same level and they keep rotating so what is a mantra how do you identify those companies at an early stage of their growth curve is there a way or if there if there are no ways then how do you go about it so the whole thing we going to discuss so uh, over to you ashish thank you so much thank you thank you thank you vikas so uh, are you able to uh, put up the presentation can you see the screen now yeah yeah so no i can't see the present yeah i can see that right first slide okay yeah you can see the first slide right Okay, and just confirm to me if you can see the slides changing. Also, then I'll start. Sure. You can see uh, the slide moving. No. Uh, Manvi, just uh, allow him to change the slide or to give give him the right. Yeah, just do the full screen, Ashish, if you can. uh yeah, yeah ashish you have to go and do entire share screen entire screen okay i'll just set it right just a moment yeah sure
Yep. All set now? Yeah, all set. Can you okay. just move to the next slide? To check. Just move to the second. Yeah, yeah, it's coming up very well. Yeah. Over to you. Thanks. OK, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Vikas and uh, entire team at AIF and PMS experts, thank you very, very much for doing this, you know, year on year. And uh, also, many, many thanks for inviting me and White Oak Capital. Uh, also, you know, congratulations and many thanks to all the uh, participants uh, who are attending uh, this webinar. Uh, what I'm going to speak today is on this topic, which is called Why Do Winners Rotate? Now, before I start my presentation, uh, I just want to give some bit of background as to, you know, why I think this topic is important and where I got the uh, idea. Uh, I have been in the mutual fund and PMS industry since 1999. And this year, in fact, uh, on 7th May uh, 2024, I finished uh, 25 years of my career in the uh, mutual fund industry. Now, what I have seen is that, you know, and for those of you, a lot of people who may not know, I have worked for first about 12 years of my career with ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund. Uh, where of course we had pms mutual funds all the products uh, then for eight years i was ceo for motilal as well and there again i had the opportunity to observe pms mutual funds passive products everything and last four years i've been ceo for white oak capital here again i've been associated with pms mutual funds and you know the entire array of managed uh, products now why did i give that background of 25 years is because as anybody who's listening uh, could imagine uh, I have had the uh, opportunity or the good fortune uh, to work with uh, many of the leading investment managers of the industry, some of the best thinkers, portfolio managers, research analysts, some of the people who have created a lot of wealth for investors uh, over the uh, decades. In this entire 25 years, what I observed is that one thing just doesn't seem to change, which is that every 18 to 24 months or every say two to three years you will find that the best performing mutual fund scheme or pms scheme the best performing fund manager the best performing fund house keeps changing every two to three years and what we find is that investors always want to invest with the best performing fund or best performing fund house or best performing uh, fund manager but what happens is that when they are investing uh, and say, you know, there is an advisor like Vikas who's running a fantastic platform here. And Vikas meets a lot of clients and a lot of advisors. And Vikas, you must have also seen that whenever somebody comes and says that I want to make an investment, uh, they are very, very careful uh, in terms of choosing which PMS or which AIF uh, they will invest in or even which mutual fund they will invest in. And when they are investing, they want to ensure that they are investing in the best performing PMS, AIF or uh, mutual fund. Now, the question is that when you take a list of PMSs, AIFs, or mutual funds, and you want to invest, and you want to see that, OK, which is the best performing one? So you see last one year, last three years. And generally, what I've seen is that there is a very, very high amount of recency bias. I mean, today, for example, if I were to meet a client and say that, you know, why don't you consider investing in our PMS? And then if I say that, OK, in the last one year and last three years, we are not the top performer, I think the meeting will end there. Uh, because you know people want to understand that i will invest in the best performing pms or aif but the definition is last one year last three year best performing and what will happen is that usually if you take industry trends for example yesterday's newspaper there was an article which said i'm not naming names but yesterday's newspaper there was an article which said that a couple of very famous pms managers the article said that they are getting huge amount of outflow from their uh, pms because in the last two to three years, they have been underperforming. And before that, few days back, there was an article which says that some XYZ PMS has got some 15,000 crore AUM because their performance is very good. Now, if uh, somebody like me who has 25 years experience, when I read these articles, you know what is my prediction? When I read such articles, my prediction is that the guy who is going to, the guy who's coming in the newspaper because he's getting maximum outflows. From here on in the next three years, I can bet he's going to be the best performer. And the guy whose name is coming in the newspaper because he's getting huge amount of inflow because he's the best performer, I can assure you next three years, he's going to be the worst performer. So this I have seen in my career over and over, over and over, over and over again and again. 
I'm not saying that people cannot identify best performer or they should not go for the best performer. Yes, if I invest, even I want to be in the best performing PMS AI for mutual fund. But the way to identify, you know, if you want to see last one year, last two year, last three year, uh, the way to identify is that definitely don't invest with the guy who's best in last one year. I think that is something to keep in mind. Normally, what people do is they give money to the guy who's the best in last one year. If, if you want to make use of last one year return, my presentation will prove to you that if you want to make any use of last one year winner or last two year winner, the conclusion should not be that identify last one or two year winner and give them money. The conclusion should be that identify last two year winner and don't give them money. Because this is what has been happening over and over, over the number of years. Now, why am I saying that? Of course, I cannot just come here and say what I want to say. I have to explain with some data, some information and some numbers. So for this, what we have done actually, uh, and I, you know, take help of my friends and I, you know, do this kind of experiment or this kind of analysis many, many times. Now, what does this slide actually say? It says that it says exactly what I mentioned, that if you want to take use of last one year, two year, three year data, then by all means use one year, two year, three year data. But after using that data, don't conclude that I should give money to the last three year winner. Conclude that I should not give money to the last two year, three year winner. Because what does the data show? Now, first, let me explain. This chart is most important. There are some 15, 16 slides in my presentation. If there is anything important, it is only this one slide, which is important. Rest of the things you will understand much better. Now, what does this chart actually say? You have to read this chart like this. First, you focus on the first two columns. OK. What does this say? It says 2009 to 2011. And then it says 2012 to 2014. What is this data? Let me explain. This is data of all the mutual fund. It could have been PMS. It could have been AIF. It could have been mutual fund. It doesn't matter. It is all the managed products. Basically, what this data tells you is that, and it has all the diversified funds. You can call it flexi cap, multi cap, large cap, mid cap, small cap, whatever you like. It does not have sector funds. It does not have thematic funds. And because we are analyzing performance of actively managed funds, it doesn't have ETF and index. So this is all diversified funds. No ETF, no index, no sectoral fund, no thematic fund. Can you zoom what does it say? If you don't mind, because the data is not visible. Okay. Is it visible now? No, your one second it disappeared. The one, second. one second, one second. I'll do it. Now is it visible to you? Yeah. Okay. And I've zoomed it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Now see, what does this data actually tell you? It tells you that from 2009 to 2011, let us say that I go to Vikas and say, Vikas ji, I want to invest in an equity product. You tell me how to invest. So Vikas ji sits with all the performance data and he tells me that, dekhiye, pichle teen saal mein. and let us say our meeting is 31st December 2011 in the evening. I'm going to Vikas ji and I'm telling him, Vikas ji, I want to put money in a fund. And uh, he shows me all the data and information. On 31st December 2011, after the NAV is declared, I tell him, sir, do one thing. Last three years, meaning 1st January 2009 to 31st December 2011, jo best performing fund hai, put my money in that. Now, three years later, so 31st December 2011, I had a meeting with him. And I decided that last three year best performing, number one ranked fund of last three years. I will be putting my money in that. That is what was decided in our meeting. Three years later, I come to meet him. And I say, Vikas ji, OK, now let us do a review. 31st December 2014, we had invested in the best performing fund on 31st December 2011. Now you tell me, Vikas ji, on 31st December 2014, what is the performance? To your utter shock, if you had invested in rank number one, you would end up being rank number 162. If you had invested in rank second rank fund, you would end up having 40. If you had invested in the third best fund, you would have ended up being up with the 38th best fund. So what is this table? Now, let me put the full screen here. What is this table? This table actually is basically a table which tells you that at any point in time, 
if you on a three year basis on a three year basis if you had invested in the best performing fund meaning on a three year basis if you invested rank number 1 to 25 where would you land up in the next three years so what it says is that if you actually at any point in time take a fund which is best performer of last three years what is the correlation or what is the possibility that it will land up in the best performer in the three years in which you are investing what you will find is that you look at the bottom at the bottom we have put something called rank correlation what it shows is that the rank of a fund in the previous 3 years and its rank in subsequent 3 years the correlation is either low or non existent see normally a correlation about 0.6 0.7 is called a strong correlation whereas there are certain data points here what it says negative correlation meaning that if a fund is top ranked it is going to end up in the bottom right some places zero correlation negative correlation low and negative correlation low correlation so we have taken variety of three year periods the highest correlation you ever come to is not over it's 0.49 that was that you know funds which did very well between 2012 to 2014 in 2015 to 2017 they didn't do that bad they did kind of okay that is why the correlation is coming 0.49 everywhere else what does it show that in the previous 3 years if something has done well so what does this data actually prove with evidence that if you are investing today in the best performer of the last 3 years there is no guarantee in fact there is some kind of almost the kind of certainty that in next 3 years it is not going to be amongst the top performers that is what the data shows that is why we have written that chasing recent performance leads to accidents now this is same thing in another way i don't want to labor you what is the reason what happens actually why does this actually happen this way the reason it happens is that any fund manager you meet they have sabka apna apna dharma hai they have their own preferred way of managing money and generally when you meet a manager some manager will say that i am buying value stocks some will say i am a momentum guy some guy will say bhai index hi le lo ye sab karne ka fayda nahi hai some guy will say quality some person will say that i am looking for the you know stocks which have you know high alpha generation capability if you see for example last two years value is best performer 2021 also it started rising previous three years value is at the bottom Nowadays, if you see quality is doing very very badly. जिसका अखबार में आर्टिकल आया था ना ये इनके लिए आर्टिकल आया था राइट और जिनकी तारीफें हो रही है वो इनके लिए आर्टिकल आया था करेक्ट नाउ यू सी वेर वेर द थिंग्स है टू थाउजेंड एटीन क्वालिटी वॉज टॉप परफॉर्मर देन इट स्टार्टेड टू गो डाउन राइट टूडे क्वालिटी इज एट द बॉटम बट एट दैट टाइम वैल्यू वॉज एट द बॉटम एंड नाउ वॉट यू आर सींग इज वैल्यू इज एट दी टॉप so you can imagine what is actually happening similarly you can see just like style keeps rotating sectors also keep rotating today for example real estate and psu banks these are you know very very hot today for example psu banks you know if you see 2022 also psu banks did very well 2023 also psu banks did well but where were psu banks before that at the bottom and you know generally you know here also here also here also but where are today where is private sector banks private sector bank is here absolutely at the bottom and in the past where was the private sector banks here at the top here at the top right today for example nobody is interested to buy pharma right nobody talks much about pharma today but in the past pharma was at the top so what happens is that style keeps rotating sector keeps rotating and the other thing which happens is that the favorite market cap so for example in the last 2 years small cap is the talk of the town anybody in the last 2 years who has a psu cyclical contra value small cap portfolio they are number one anybody who is a bottom up stock picker coming and talking to you boring things about free cash flow good governance longevity all of those guys are looking like they don't know how to manage money and all the guys who are just buying small caps or you know psu cyclical contra they are all number 1 but if you see for example in the past 
here small cap was doing badly here small cap was doing badly i distinctly remember in march 2023 the level of small cap index was the same level as it was in 2018 right so three things we have learned from these charts number one style keeps changing number two sector keeps rotating number three market caps also keep on rotating and generally what you will find is that the guy who is number one today is heavily into small cap mid cap or heavily into defense psu infrastructure right and the guys who are at the bottom today are probably the guys who have you know long term private sector banks it companies consumer companies large cap kind of bias right and why is it it's not that these fund managers lose their skill sets or they lose their ability to manage money the reality is that when macroeconomic circumstances change what will work in the market that also changes and the problem with macroeconomic circumstances is that it is very very difficult like for example last two years everybody has been predicting us interest rate cut last two years everybody has been predicting third world war last two years everybody has been predicting many many things but i'll give you an example in february 2020 <clears throat> why you cannot forecast the macro in february 2020 if somebody told you that look now there will be covid it will be a pandemic everybody will be at home for six months uh, you know there will be some uh, index will fall 40% many companies will have to be closed for six months you know this kind of thing will happen if somebody in february 2020 told you that this is going to happen what would you do you would actually you know and cash your entire portfolio put it under the pillow but you would be satisfied for barely 5 to 6 months because in 5 to 6 months the market started making new highs so what would your reaction be that bhai who told you in february 2020 first you look for that person because he told you to get out in february 2020 but he did not tell you that april 2020 you have to get back inside second so what happens is that you cannot predict the macro and most important thing is that even if you are good at predicting the macro you cannot predict how the market will react so for instance when this election mandate came everybody was predicting that if there is a coalition government the focus on capex will go away and only consumer will work but what happened that theory lasted for two days now again defense psu infrastructure everything is flying and things are not going as per what was pronounced on 4th of june right there is of course some sector rotation but lot of times what happens is that we try to predict macros there are two learnings one difficult to predict macros and second even if you predict the macro it is nearly impossible to predict how the market will actually behave so winners keep rotating because styles keep rotating sectors keep rotating and market caps also keep rotating and whenever there is a change in macroeconomic circumstances the winners keep on rotating the other important thing is, which is also gets played out is that ultimately the client does not say that you should be growth style value style or you should be large cap mid cap or you should be into it or into psu bank it's the manager's decision where to invest but what happens is that ultimately we all are comparing our performance with the equity market and the equity market is basically manifested by bsc 500 so what you will see is that the index itself the index is not large cap or small cap the index is large cap and it is small and mid cap the index is not value or growth you know a fund manager may be growth style or value style but the index is not value or growth index is almost half half there are many guys today who are winning because they are in cyclical but the index is not cyclical the index is 37% into defensive stocks also today there are many guys who are doing very well because they are focused on domestic companies but the index is not only domestic companies the index is 37% into exports also today if you see for example because interest rates have gone up growth stocks are doing badly right typically when interest rates go up the stocks with long gestation cash flows they tend to suffer because the further the cash flows the discounting rate hurts them more today when interest rates have gone up the value stocks are doing well because when the interest rates go up the discounting factor goes up but discounting factor is less important for companies with short gestation cash flows discounting factor is very important for companies with long gestation discounted cash flow or the future visibility so today what is happening is when interest rates have gone up value is doing very well but there is a discussion that in india you know if us cuts rate at some point in time we might also be cutting rates and there is potential that you know because of the external macro and many other things there is potential for interest rates to come down 
suddenly you might see that from value you start rotating into growth and the index is not just of value stocks the index has growth also right today for example state owned enterprise is psu today for example everybody thinks you should be in psu but the index is 88% private sector it's not just psu so what happens is just to sum up this section of my presentation three things you should keep in mind winners or best performers keep rotating why do best performers keep rotating because macroeconomic situations keep rotating and when macroeconomic situations keep rotating which style which sector which market cap will do well that also keeps on rotating ultimately for any active manager the competition is with the index the broadest index is bse 500 and the index is not growth or value the index is growth and value the index is not made only of PSU stocks. Today, PSU is in fashion, but the index is 88% private sector. Today, for example, growth stocks are doing badly because rates and discounting factor has gone. But ultimately, the rates will come down and discounting factor will come down. Ultimately, instead of value, you might see growth might start going well. I am not predicting. I am just telling you that you have to be open-minded. You have to be uh, you have to be open-minded. You have to be probabilistic because if you keep insisting that you will invest in the winners of the past, then what will happen is today, for example, small and mid-cap is in fashion, but it can change. Today, for example, value is in fashion, but it will ultimately change. Today, cyclical is in fashion, but ultimately this will change. Today, domestic is in fashion. Ultimately, at some point in time, exports will also come back. Today, for example, rate sensitives are getting hurt and not non-rate sensitives are in fashion, but ultimately this may come back. Today, for example, state-owned enterprises are in fashion, but ultimately market is private also. So you can rest assured if there is any, like, you know, there is a famous saying that if there is any constant, the only constant is change. And today's winners are not going to be tomorrow's winners. The other important thing, I don't want to, you know, spend much time, but ultimately this is what I explained about market cap also. And then I also explained about change in global interest rates. When rates go up, value tends to perform. But if rates are going to go down, then growth tends to perform. And different economic cycles, you can see different kind of sectors also tend to do well. Today, for example, you are with a value oriented, you know, if today anybody who is value oriented and full of PSU, they are actually doing very, very well. But five years back, if you had invested with somebody thinking that, you know, it is cheap and I should buy PSU and value, then what you would find is that for four years, you would be actually waiting. And then for two years, you would get the return. And going forward, where it will go is anybody's guess. So net net, there is a roller coaster kind of cyclicality. And if I step into investor shoes, the performance is, you know, kabhi jannat, kabhi jan, right? They think that everybody thinks that they want to enter the guy who is actually showing them the Jannat. Everybody wants to enter with the guy who is showing them Jannat. But you can rest assured, jo abhi Jannat mein hai, wo kabhi Jannum mein jayega. Aur jo abhi Jannum mein hai, wo kabhi na kabhi Jannat mein jayega. Right? There is a very famous proverb on this, which I am not able to remember right now, but you can understand it. The problem is that these extreme, extreme scenarios evoke emotions. And emotions drive us to make mistakes. So investment strategies that expose investors to extreme, they will never find long lasting investors. That is the key thing to keep in mind. Now, what is the implication? You know, there are many PMSs. It is not my above my pay grade to make any comparisons. So we just write peer number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in the middle, we write why took. So what is the reason why I shared all of this? What is the solution to all of this? The solution to all of this is that if you have portfolios, which are biased on any sector, portfolios which are biased on any style, and portfolios which are biased on any kind of market cap, you can rest assured that they will keep swinging between Jannat and Jahannam. Now, what is the implicate? What, what is the way out? So, for example, at White Oak, what we say is that you should have a portfolio which is broad-based and which is balanced. So, how does it play out? You can see, let us say we started in 2017. Now, this is not a plug for White Oak, but this is just to explain that when winners rotate, how the performance of the PMSs that you invest in, how they also rotate. And here, the entire industry is here. There is nothing which is missed out. All the big PMSs are out here. So what you will find is that in 2017, when we started, let us say we are here. In 2018, we are here. In 2013, in 2019, we are 13, 
in 2020-34, 2021-34. Now 2022, you will see that we are actually negative return, correct? But when we are at a negative return, the worst guy is say minus 21 and the best guy is actually say 0 0.2. So what will what you will see is, for example, in our strategy itself, in these four years, we are amongst the top performers. In last two years, we are not amongst the top performers. But when we are not in the top performer, you will find that we are somewhere falling in the middle. Like when we are at 22% return, the best guy is 42, which is staggering performance. But you will find that the worst guy is 15. When we are at plus 6.7, you will find the worst guy is minus 1.8 and the best guy is, say, 12. When we are at minus 6.6, .6, you will find the worst guy is minus 21 and the best guy is, let us say, plus 5. So how is this playing out? The portfolio construction is playing out in a way that when it is doing well, it is not number one. When it is doing well, it is at the top. When it is doing badly, it is at the middle. And ultimately, in the entire period, it is actually coming second best. Now, you see here, for example, we are clearly not amongst top performers. So say, for example, here, top performer. And who is below us? Let us say this interesting one is, let us say, uh, you take an example of this peer number. Say this is one of our peers, peer number seven. When we are top peer. It's not visible. Sorry? This particular slide is not visible. Can you move the slide? You can see this. There are colorful blocks which are stacked up. Uh, no. Uh, the share. You can read this. No, we have. You have to just scroll it down. Yeah. You can see a slide saying "judging performance." No. You can see this slide where I was doing all the markings. Yeah. Winners that, rotate. That was visible. But this particular slide is not visible that you're trying. Maybe Should I stop sharing it again? Yeah, yeah. It's suddenly sure, got this yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. I think when you make an important point, it disappears. <laughs> Can you see it now, Vikas? Uh, it's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, I can see now, can you see this colorful yes. blocks you can see now? Yes. Yeah. Thanks for pointing out. So basically, what I was trying to say is that, as you can see, let us take an example of peer number seven. This peer number seven started at the bottom, then came somewhere in the middle, then again came down, again went up, again went down, right? And now again at the top. But in the full year period, it is full period, it is now. Now let us say peer number one, which is now at the top. In the so on a full basis, white oak is number two and ahead of the benchmark. But today, where we are, when we are not doing well, we are in the middle. When we are doing well, we are actually amongst the top. Now let us take a few examples. Where is this peer number one? Peer number one, when we started, it started with us. Then it went to the went down, went to the bottom then went to the top, again somewhere came in the middle, again came down and gone up. Now let us take an example of this peer number nine, which is today down, right? Or let us say take an example. So what you will find, you know, I don't want to labor the whole point. Basic thing, what you will keep in mind or what you will notice from this is that if you make a portfolio which is broad based, how it plays out. If you make a portfolio which is broad based, when you're doing well, you're amongst the better performers. When you are doing badly, you land up in the middle. Now, let us say there is peer number eight. Starts at the bottom, goes to the top. Again at the bottom, again starts rising. But ultimately, on a full period basis, it is low. So what is the key point? The key point is that if you are invested in any portfolio, you should keep in mind at any point in time, somebody will be ahead of you. Somebody will be behind you. If you try to be number one, then you can rest assured someday you will be number 20. And if you try to be consistent, then there is hope that investors will stay with you. 
that is the key point to keep in mind like even from an investor's perspective what it shows is that if you chase the top performer see at any point in time let's say here you are chasing top performer right now last 3 years this is top performer but before that it was somewhere below the average let us say that you take this peer number 4 here it is top performer but somewhere here it is actually so instead of fluctuating from number 1 to number 20 the best approach is to invest in a way that if you do well you are above average if you do badly you should land up at or near the average that is the key thing the people who have extremities of style sector market cap they are the ones who tend to be either number 1 or number 20 whereas if you the learning is that if you make a broader portfolio if you make a portfolio which is balanced for you know like i mentioned that the index is made up of multiple factors if you balance for all these factors you will have a more consistent performance and even from investors perspective they are better off looking for balance in their portfolio composition rather than looking for number one because the one which has a balance will be consistent and the one which is number 1 is definitely sometime going to go to number 20 and the one which is today number 20 is definitely sometime going to go back to number 1 so i think these are some key learnings that one should always keep in mind when you are trying to select which type of manager or which type of portfolio to invest in i think i'll leave you with one last message when it comes to investing it's a very interesting thing human beings love to be deterministic but for success you have to be probabilistic so only if you are somebody who is open minded and probabilistic then you will make a broader portfolio because you are open to possibilities you don't know whether interest rates will go down from september or they'll go down from december you don't know whether private sector banks will start outperforming from next week or from next month you don't know when people will suddenly realize that lot of stocks have gone up only on order book whereas actually cash flow is what is important so it is better that you are probabilistic and you make a portfolio which is broad based and a portfolio which is aimed at consistency rather than making a portfolio which is swinging on the extremes so this is what i wanted to share with us thanks i'll stop here and you know my apologies for a couple of those inter uh, those you know interruptions with related to the uh, screen sharing so i'll pause here thank you thank you ashish it was great uh, insight uh, you know very difficult to stay at the same level and it keeps moving so आपने जो बोला कि जन्नत भी मिलेगी और जहन्नुम भी मिलेगा आपे आपको क्रिस पे रहना जरूरी है विच इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट सो थैंक यू सो मच आशीष इट वाज अ ग्रेट प्रेजेंटेशन थैंक यू या इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू सॉर्ट ऑफ जज हु इज गोइंग टू बी द नंबर वन ऑल द टाइम बट इट्स वेरी इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड द इन्वेस्टमेंट फिलोसफी एंड प्रिडिक्ट टू एज यू राइटली सेट दैट यू कैन ओनली प्रिडिक्ट थिंग्स एंड बी ओपन फॉर दिस प्रिडिक्शन 